Okay, so cognitive model, I couldn't uh, leave us today without putting a triangle on the screen. And so this is the triangle that I'm choosing for today. Um, so you all have probably seen this, um, the cognitive triangle or the CBT triangle, so cognitive behavioral therapy triangle, but it's essentially just a visual for what we were just talking about. Um, so this idea that um, all of us all the time um, have our thoughts, our feelings, our behaviors, and that all of these three things are interacting um, constantly. Um, lots of folks have ideas about which one comes first, which one comes last, how they relate. Um, I'll point out that even the best research has a hard time untangling this because a lot of this happens very, very quickly for ourselves and for other people. A lot of times it happens without our awareness or anyone's awareness. And so this looks really simple, but is also really tough. Um, two things to point out in terms of um, kind of some cheerleading for behavioral approaches. Um, so one, and Christy, if you push next, I added animation just for, for fun um, to make your job challenging today. Um, so one, behavior includes what we say and what we do. And so our behavior is our words and our actions. And then the next one, Christy, is that when we think about these three different pieces, and this continues to be an aha for me, and I try to continue to remind myself of this, um, is that when we look at behavior, that's where the greatest oppor opportunity for change comes. So our own behavior and other people's behavior, um, and really a big piece of this is that it's really hard to control thoughts and feelings. It's hard to change thoughts and feelings. It is absolutely possible. It's something that we can work towards and work towards managing. Um, but if we start and we are seeing a really big behavior, um, maybe a behavior that is um, not consistent with expectations, a behavior that's disruptive, we can stick with and think about the thoughts and feelings piece a lot. Um, but really when we focus on what we can actually change, um, the behavior is often the place to go to. Um, and some of this um, really connected with me from some of the trauma responsive work that we've done in the past and similar kinds of echoes. When we think about um, post-disaster responses and that one of the pieces um, that we talk about when we think about post-disaster responses is um, controlling behaviors and specifically int the introduction of sort of pleasurable activities because that's something that we can schedule, we can control. Um, and so that behavioral piece, even when the thoughts and feelings are really, really challenging, sometimes the behavioral piece, if we focus on that, gives us a little bit more traction. Um, and that's part of the reason why I think behavioral approaches and behavioral thinking is so powerful in schools. So if we go to the next slide, Christy. And then also thinking about for us, and when we think about behavior and this focus on behavior, that I think about this circle of control and how often we get ourselves in a lot of trouble when we start thinking about behavior and what we can and can't control. So many of you all might be very familiar with this idea of the circle of control, or maybe you've seen kind of on the right side, this sort of poster or visual um, often used with, with young people. I use it all the time with adults, um, but just this idea of being really clear about what we can control and what we can't control. Um, because the reality is that as a human, I can never actually control what anybody else does, so their behaviors or their feelings or their thoughts. Um, what I can control is me and what I do, um, maybe what I feel and what I think, but certainly it's me. I can control me. Um, and so I think oftentimes we spend a lot of time um, in kind of this circle of concern space, especially when we're talking about really um, big disruptive behaviors. And so we spend a lot of time thinking about and worrying about and doing all those really human things um, in a space where we actually can't control anything. Um, we can't even influence it. And so I think this is kind of a good reminder to focus on what we have, what we bring to the table, which is us. Um, and in a classroom and in a lot of school contexts, um, the, the adults that who's in charge, the teacher or the school counselor or the administrator, that's where, that's where we can focus because that's what actually we can control. We can't make anybody else do anything. I can't make you do anything. Um, I can create conditions that make it more likely maybe that a young person is going to do something or another or that any of you might do something or not, um, but I can't actually control it. There's a broader space that I can influence, but there's also a lot of things that I can't control. And so for me, very practically speaking, investing energy where we can actually make change can be really powerful. And being really clear about what that means. And so when um, we talk about um, kind of a, a cognitive behavioral approach or thinking about this in terms of functions of behavior, um, when we think about where the adults can actually have an impact, absolutely adults in a school context and a community context 
can um, can shape the situation, right? That's where we have, I would argue, our most control often is in the situation, so in the context. Um, and then also our control over ourselves. And so this thought, emotion, behavior, kind of the rest of this chain, I think a lot of times we look at this and we're thinking about a young person's behavior and their feelings and their thoughts, and that's valuable. And I'm not saying it's not, but I think in these situations, a lot of times it really is about the adults. And so when you look at something like you know, positive behavior intervention supports, this is a bedrock of what they talk about is that in any situation, if we're talking about behavior management or behavior change with young people, the first thing that has to change is us and we have to change the context and we have to shift the context because that's what we can actually control. Um, so again, kind of thinking about the pieces that we can change and the pieces that we can't change, even as we're um, going to move into talking a lot about um, young people's behavior and then what we can do in a school context to try to affect those behaviors.